This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, good morning on this slightly cooler day. It feels very good, a relief from that oppressive heat this week. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, we were going to do third grade Bible presentations today, but given um, many of the, the kids are not going to be here today, I decided to, to, that maybe it would be better if we moved it so that they could all enjoy and, and be a part of that. Um, I want it to be a special occasion for them, and, and um, I don't want them to miss out on that. And so we're going to move that. I spoke with, um, um, with Emily and Biederman, who's, whose son Leo is being baptized on the 24th of September, and she said that it would be absolutely fabulous if we did the, 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 the um, presentations then. We can do Theo's baptism and also rejoice in receiving these third grade Bibles and, and how special and wonderful is that in making the connections to all of these things. And so, so we're going to have third grade Bible presentations on September 24th instead of today, even though they will be in the slides. Um, I'm not sure next Sunday, uh, September 3rd, if we will have um, technology available to us. Um, Sharon and Roger are on um, vacation, and so um, we'll just have to do what we do. We're going to worship anyway, because that's never going to be um, in, impinged upon. So, but, but we may not have slides, and so Sharon does have all of those things printed out in, in the bulletins and things for us so that we can follow along. Um, next Sunday. Um, I'm really happy that they're able to take this vacation because they've both been working really hard. So, uh, does anybody else have anything for the good of community? Jenna. Uh, this is Rita in the back. Um, I would like to extend those that can prepare a meal for Becky Lassen. We have a Meals on Wheels set up, and if you can, we're, she is um, non way bearing for a couple more weeks, more than she had anticipated. So if you could uh, see me after church, I will either uh, load it for you or tell you how to do that. Um, but uh, I know this next week is kind of open, so if anybody can do that, I we would appreciate that. Just see me after church, and I'll give you the website, or I'll load it for you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, then let's join together in our worship. Okay, am I on? Okay. Gracious and loving God, bless us with your presence as we worship this day. Bless us with your love as we grow in love and mature faith. Bless us with your guidance as we give ourselves to you, to your church, and to your work in the world. Amen. Oh, great thou Jehovah.
Our epistle reading this morning is from Romans 12, verses 1 through 8. So, brothers and sisters, because of God's mercies, I encourage you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice that is holy and pleasing to God. This is your appropriate priestly service. Don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you can figure out what God's will is, what is good and pleasing and mature. Because of the grace that God gave me, I can say to each one of you, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Instead, be reasonable since God has measured out a portion of faith to each one of you. We have many parts in one body, but the parts don't all have the same function. In the same way, though there are many of us, we are one body in Christ, and individually we belong to each other. We have different gifts that are consistent with God's grace that has been given to us. If your gift is prophecy, you should prophesy in proportion to your faith. If your gift is service, devote yourself to serving. If your gift is teaching, devote yourself to teaching. If your gift is encouragement, devote yourself to encouraging. The one giving should do it with no strings attached. The leader should lead with passion. The one showing mercy should be cheerful. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Join our voices in singing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, hymn 400. Our next reading is from Exodus, let's see, 1, 1 to 2, and verse 10. These are the names of the Israelites who came to Egypt with Jacob along with their households. Reuben, Simon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, 
Gad, and Asher. The total number in Jacob's family was 70. Joseph was already in Egypt. Eventually, Joseph, his brothers, and everyone in his generation died. But the Israelites were fertile and became populous. They multiplied and grew dramatically, filling the whole land. Now a new king came to, in, to power in Egypt who didn't know Joseph. He said to his people, the Israelite people are now larger in number and stronger than we are. Come on, let's be smart and deal with them. Otherwise, they will only grow in number. And if war breaks out, they will join our enemies, fight against us, and then escape from the land. As a result, the Egyptians put foremen of forced work gangs over the Israelites to harass them with hard work. They had to build storage cities named Python and Ramesses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they grew and spread, so much so that the Egyptians started to look at the Israelites with disgust and dread. So the Egyptians enslaved the Israelites. They made their lives miserable with hard labor, making mortar and bricks, doing field work, and by forcing them to do all kinds of other cruel work. The king of Egypt spoke to two Hebrew midwives named Shifra and Pua. When you are helping the Hebrew women give birth and you see the baby being born, if it's a boy, kill him. If it's a girl, you can let her live. Now the two midwives respected God, so they didn't obey the Egyptian king's order. Instead, they let the baby boys live. So the king of Egypt called the two midwives and said to them, why are you doing this? Why are you letting the baby boys live? The two midwives said to Pharaoh, because Hebrew women aren't like Egyptian women. They're much stronger and give birth before any midwives can get to them. So God treated the midwives well, and the people kept on multiplying and became very strong. And because the midwives respected God, God gave them households of their own. Then Pharaoh gave an order to all his people. Throw every baby boy born to the Hebrews into the Nile River, but you can let all the girls live. Now a man from Levi's household married a, married a Levite woman. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that the baby was healthy and beautiful, so she hid him for three months. When she couldn't hide him any longer, she took a reed basket and sealed it up with black tar. She put the child in the basket and set the basket among the reeds at the riverbank. The baby's older sister stood watch nearby to see what would happen to him. Pharaoh's daughters came down to bathe in the river while her women servants walked along beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and she sent one of her servants to bring it to her. When she opened it, she saw the child. The boy was crying and she felt sorry for him. She said, this must be one of the Hebrews' children. Then the baby's sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, would you like me to go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter agreed, yes, do that. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me, and I'll pay you for your work. So the woman took the child and nursed it. After the child had grown up, she brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I pulled him out of the water. The word of God in scripture, the word of God among us, the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. on your new shoes and I like 
the daisy on the front of your on the front of your overalls too. It's so pretty. So pretty. We like dinosaurs, don't we? Do you like dinosaurs? Yeah, me too. Do y'all like dinosaurs? Yeah, we all like di like dinosaurs. Yeah, you have a favorite dinosaur? The water one. Okay, I don't know what that is. Do y'all know what that is? I don't know what that is. I, I know very few names of the dinosaurs. Oh. Mosasaurus. 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 Hmm, that's interesting. All right. All right. Well, in our, in our text this morning, in the Bible today, we learned about, we learned about doing something special for other people to help them survive. Moses' mom puts him in a, in a basket and then floats him down the river so that she can be safe, so that the baby can be safe. And that's kind of important because that's kind of what, what, what Jesus does for us. He keeps us pretty safe. And you know, I was wondering something. Y'all started school this week, right? Yeah, you have. You started school this week, right? So if you started school this week, I was wondering about something. Do you know what it, um, a sacrifice is? Mm -hmm. What does sacrifice mean, Houston? So you, you hurt someone very badly until they it's you're giving up something, you're giving something up, aren't they? It's, yep, yeah, mm hmm they're sacrificing something for someone else, aren't they? Mm-hmm, yeah. And like God did. Yeah, yeah, just like Jesus did, didn't he? Jesus was a sacrifice, oh, wasn't he? Jesus was, yeah, Jesus was a sacrifice, yes, he's got this. He's got this, yeah. And, and, and why do you suppose Jesus did that? You know why Jesus? To save To save mankind. This is a very smart young man to save, <laughs> to save mankind, absolutely. So let me ask you a question. If someone at school doesn't have a lunch and you have a lunch and you can see that they're really hungry, what do you think that you could do that might help them? What do you think, Chris? Give up your lunch for them, or at least share your lunch with them, right? Yeah, yeah. So do you think, Addison, do you think that that's a sacrifice? It's a sacrifice on your behalf, isn't it? I thought sacrificing yeah. means murdering yourself. Well, sometimes it does. It means putting ourselves out there on the line and, and sacrificing um, life. Sometimes it means that. But in our world today, generally, it doesn't necessarily always mean that. Sometimes it just means but doing good things for other people. If you people. gave up your lunch, then you would be hungry, and he would give you their lunch, and then they would be hungry. It would, it would be, you know what, have you ever heard, pay it forward? Have you ever heard that phrase? Y'all oh, yeah. ever heard that phrase, pay it forward? So you, what, what do you think pay it forward means? Give it. Get it one to the other, yeah. So, so if you gave up your lunch for someone else, and then somebody sees, oh, well, he did this really nice thing by giving his lunch to somebody else. Then maybe somebody would give you their, their lunch, and it just goes on and on and on like that, and, and everybody's sharing their lunch with everybody else, and isn't that a special thing? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What if That's... you run out of food for everyone? Oh, I don't think we would do that. I don't think that would happen. Because you know what? Jesus would make sure that you all got fed a little something, just like we have, we have things here. I'm going to, to share all what I have in here. I have crackers in here. We're going to share that. And he's like, mmm. Yeah. You know what? what? What it means to sacrifice is to just be an example of Jesus and live, live like Jesus, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Don't you think? You all think that? Yep. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Shall we, shall we have a little prayer? Yes. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for being our sacrifice. Help us to be sacrifices for others, that we would be willing to give up our lunches, that we would be willing to share our snacks, that we would be kind to each other, and that we would um, always help each other when, when we're in trouble. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so now, a snack. Thank you. Snack, wait, five. 
All right, gotta give me five. All right, all right. Kira, those are some fancy dinosaur shoes, and I really am jealous that I don't have any. I'm wondering, do you think that they sell them in big people sizes? Do you think so? Maybe? I don't know. All right. Let's pray. Let's pray. Open wide the window of our spirits, O Lord, and fill us full of your light. Open wide the door of our hearts, that we may receive and entertain you with all our powers of adoration and love. Amen. Many years ago, while working as a finance controller for a large corporation, it was my job to process all the financial statements, including internal audits, and account reconciliations. During a financially difficult time in the business, I uncovered fraudulent billing activities during an account reconciliation. There are lots of details that I, I cannot share, but suffice it to say that some of the floor supervisors were charging labor hours to customers on work that was not being performed. After much investigation and documentation, I had a decision to make report it to upper management, and risk retaliation, or look the other way. I chose to report it. And despite the evidence, despite the evidence, upper management chose not to do anything about it. But it didn't matter. I still suffered retaliation. I was verbally harassed most every single day at work, and one day my car was even keyed. It was so bad that I eventually chose to resign even though I didn't have another job. Living a life in Christ, it's risky business. Making the connection between our Exodus text and the Apostle Paul's words in Romans is where we're going today. What does it mean to be a living sacrifice to God and what can we learn from Exodus text about being a living sacrifice. Chapter 1 of the Exodus journey begins with reminding us how the Israelites ended up in Egypt, but that after many years, Jacob and his sons, including Joseph, are all gone. And the new king of Egypt has only one thing on his mind, maintaining his own kingly oppressive rule. There are two types of fear revealed in the text today. The first is a deep fear of losing something, of losing status quo. And the second is the fear of the Lord. Pharaoh's fear leads to a deadly policy of systematic murder of innocent babies. The midwives' defiance of an earthly king is due to their fear of God. Fear of God in the Bible, however, is not generally meant as fear of wrath. Rather, it is meant as deep reverence for God and relationship with God. So the midwives, who unlike Pharaoh, are named in the text as Shifra and Pua, refuse to be used by the systems of Egyptian power. There is this juxtaposition between good and evil, faith and fear, hope and despair. They do not fear the king because they, they know who God is and the promises of God to deliver. The midwives put themselves on the line for the sake of the Hebrew babies, for the sake of Israel, for the sake of God's redemptive mission. 
through the people of Israel. And in their defiance of the king's edict, they risk much and act as holy and living sacrifices to God. When Pharaoh finds out that the midwives have left, let the bo baby boys live, he interrogates them and their actions. Why are you doing this, he says. Why are you letting the, the little baby boys live? To which they cover up with a tale that Hebrew women are different than Egyptian women and somehow are able to give birth much faster and asserting their innocence. The midwives, they're not accusing the Hebrew mothers. Rather, the midwives mean in their embellished explanation of the Hebrew births is that nothing, nothing can stop God. Nothing can oppose God because in the end, God will bring about God's redemptive mission. And the midwives are participating in that very act of redemption by how they approach Pharaoh, an earthly king, an earthly kingly rule versus an eternal kingly rule. They risk it all to protect the innocent and become holy and living sacrifices to God. God knows our human proclivity toward fear, which is why God constantly reminds us not to fear. In fact, in fact, there are enough instances of God commanding us not to fear in the Bible for every single day of the year. 365 times throughout scripture, God says phrases like, do not be afraid or do not fear. There are many things that we fear, but fear prevents us from growing in our faith and relationship with God. And fear prevents us from being living sacrifice for God in this world. Being a living sacrifice requires courage over fear, hope over despair. Scripture also tells us that perfect love casts out fear. Fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. That is from 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. That punishment driven by fear is what I like to refer to as that retribution or retaliation. It can be scary to risk everything, to do what is right according to God. But being a living sacrifice is, is to come down on the side of love, which is the side of God, despite our fears. The Exodus text helps us answer this question. What would it look like if we abandoned fear in favor of love? What would it look like if we abandoned fear in favor of faith? Two words that begin with the letter F. One is harmful, and the other sets us free to be living sacrifices to God. When you think about Moses' mother, she risked something. She risked not knowing what would happen to her baby boy when she places him in that basket and sends him down the Nile River. The very Nile that becomes a watery grave for many of the infants becomes a place of rescue for Moses. I think most mothers would risk everything to save the life of their child, including sacrificing themselves. That is perfect love, casting out fear. But here's the sticky part. That is the exact kind of love that the midwives have for God, that they would act in such reverence and love of God as to lay themselves on the line 
for many children, not of their own womb. The kind of love we are to have for others as living sacrifices to God. Faith over fear is precisely what being living sacrifice to God looks like. When we trust in God to walk to walk alongside us, when we stand up for injustices in the world, injustices like human trafficking, domestic violence, crimes against humanity and creation, as well as as well as smaller injustices like choosing not to be a part of spreading rumors or gossip, whether there is any truth to it or not, then we are being living sacrifices unto God by standing up and saying, I will not be a part of that. Even more so, being a living sacrifice is doing our part in calling out what is wrong about it, even when there is possible retribution for speaking up and speaking out. Perfect love drives out fear. And being perfected in love of all God's children is the ultimate goal of our faith, according to our Methodist roots. Because John Wesley believed that going on to Christian perfection is not about being sinless. It is about being perfected in love. We are saved through our faith by the grace of God to sacrifice God's one and only Son to death on a cross. That is a love more powerful than any fear. It is perfect love. And we do, we do have the capacity to love like that because God loved us like that first. Fear drives Pharaoh to do unspeakable things in order to hold on to his position and his lifestyle. Throughout scripture, we encounter individuals just like him. In fact, our Lord and Savior ironically flees to Egypt nearly 1,300 years later for safety when King Herod, the Jewish king, orders a similar massacre of innocent babies in, fearing, in fear of losing control of his position of power. Jesus was in the exact same jeopardy as an infant as Moses and the other male infants in our Exodus text this morning. Being a holy and living sacrifice to God, it's risky business. But here is the good news, folks. The rewards are always greater in the end, despite our circumstances at the time. I don't regret for a single moment doing what was right all those years ago, despite all that I had to endure. And in the end, leaving that job meant getting to spend some very important quality time with my dying mother. And it was the beginning of a truly wonderful life that I now have in Christ. And it is all because, all because I chose to be a living sacrifice to God. May it be so with you. In the name of the living, loving Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Just as Jesus gives us his peace, let us so now share the peace of Christ with one another, remembering that not everyone wants to shake hands. So use your words.
How about that? Do you need me to repeat it? Let's do it. Bring your time, bring your talents, bring your service, bring your gifts, and bring your witness. All of these are acceptable unto our Lord. And as our ushers come forward, let us join Peg in singing along with the song Raise a Hallelujah by Bethel.
Please join me in our offering prayer. Ever giving God, help us give as fully to you and to your world as you have given to us. Transform our gifts with your love that, we, that they may become vessels of your love for others. Amen. You may be seated. Do we have any joys or concerns to lift up? We're going to pray for some rain um, today and tomorrow and the next day. Well, Steve is home, and um, I wanted to tell the children how wonderful their voices were, and it was wonderful to hear you singing. Over in this corner, it was nice. So I know it's on the schedule and most of the parents know, but this afternoon at three o'clock, we're having a meet and greet luau for the families of Wow and their friends. Um, so the parents and all the children, the whole family is invited and we are going to have some fun for about an hour. And I thank Peg for leading <laughs> this event. Um, she planned it all and her committee. Thank you very much. I am super excited for the luau. I, I will be with, with Marsha, with the parents. I wish I was going to be watching with the kids because they're going to watch a movie. And, and, and their theater seating is swimming pools. So we're going to get some blow up swimming pools and, and, and then we're going to set up some um, really comfy like theater seating in the swimming pools in the fellowship. Not filled with water, obviously, no, no. But, but they're, they're going to use the, the, the little swimming pools with blankets and stuff, pillows and all kinds of fun stuff. And yeah, I wish I was hanging out with them. Anything else? Seeing none, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord of resurrection, Lord of hope, Lord of love, Lord of life. You are the one who makes all things new. You restore life from death. You shine light into, into darkness. And you reveal your truth to us. Flood our hearts with the newness of your resurrection promise so that when difficulties come, we have the courage to rise to new beginnings with bold confidence and joy. Strengthen us in our fears to be living sacrifices for you, O oh God, Lord of our lives. Overwhelm us, mighty Savior, with your peace, your hope, your promise, and love that we may live into your amazing grace with eyes wide open for all that the journey may be, united in one in our faith saved by your grace. O Holy One, we pray continually for all those in our church and in our community and in neighboring communities who are in need of your healing and peace. Most especially, Lord, right now, we could use much rain. And it would be really nice, and I'm praying specifically here, Lord, if you could bring so much rain without the wind and the storms and the damage. Water the earth in which you created so that things can grow, so that things can be harvested in abundance that we know that you provide. Fill us full of that living water. May it rain down on us, literally. Drenching our heads and our gardens and our fields, washing away 
all of the things that are not good. Lord, we pray this day for those who mourn. We pray for those who are in care centers and nursing homes and hospitals. We pray for those suffering around the world from persecution or have had violent acts committed against them. Oh Lord, break our hearts for what breaks yours. We pray, O oh Lord, for those suffering from natural disasters, from those who hunger and are hungry and are poor. We pray, O oh Lord, for those afflicted by illness and those recovering from surgery. And inside of all of these, O oh Lord, we are so thankful for the many joys that you bestow upon us. We are thankful that Steve is home from the, the, the hospital as well as the care center. We ask that you continue to wrap him and, and Don and Becky up in your arms of love and of healing. Lord, we pray um, and give thanks to you for our family and our friends. We're thankful for Surprise pickleball tournaments for laughter and for joy that you fill us full of. We are thankful for our baptism that reminds us of resurrection, promise, renewal, and rebirth. We're thankful, Lord, for um, the children of this church. And they love you, and you love them so, so much. But we are, above all, thankful for your amazing love that makes all things new. For all of these that have been spoken and those that remain on our hearts, Lord, may all of these fill your loving arms of comfort holding them and your healing peace surrounding them as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I heard little voices saying our Lord's Prayer with confidence. What a joy you all are. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes, that's right. We make a joyful noise in the, in, the, in the church, correct? All right, let's stand for our final hymn and sing Trust and Obey, hymn 467.
Hear now these words of benediction and blessing. Go in peace and as holy and living sacrifices for God in this world. And may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and always. And all God's children say, Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.